एमीटर प्लास्टिक पाइप था फोर्टीन को हाँ लिंक तो भेजा नहीं है सर नहीं वो रजिस्ट्रेशन लिंक भेजा है नहीं मेरे पास तो नहीं है मैं भेजा है अभी भेज देता हूँ सर 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 2.5 मीटर डायमीटर प्लास्टिक पाइप्स हाँ 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 और डेट इस बीइंग कंडक्टेड बाय मतलब बाय सम अदर डिपार्टमेंट नहीं नहीं हमारा ही डिपार्टमेंट एंड विथ यू केवंजर एंड बीट मेस्टर सर 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 ओके लेट अस स्टार्ट आ सितंशु सितंशु तो लेट अस स्टार्ट और अगर टू मिनट्स आ गया अब तो इसे नमस्कार है सर नमस्कार अंतरिक्ष सर नमस्कार 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 सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर सर सुबह लगा हमारे ऑडिबल टॉल ऑफ़ है सर ऑडिबल सर ओके गुड मॉर्निंग सर तो इट्स वेरी गुड दैट वी आर ऑल ऑफ़ अस इन टाइम सो वी कैन स्टार्ट इट I request our HOD sir to start the program. Okay. A, a very good morning to everyone present in this online platform. Respected Chief Guest uh, Sir Antar Yami Mishra Sir, SPIU Odisha. Respected Principal Professor Trilochan Sau Sir, GC Kemu Sir, Convener of the Seminar Professor Sitansu Kumar Das, HOD Sir Department. And dear parti uh, participants, I welcome you all to the seminar on innovations and advancement in transportation engineering, that is IAT 2020, which is organized by Department of Civil Engineering, GC Kyawjar, Odisha, and ICT Mumbai. I would like to welcome our chief guest, sir, to this inauguration session, Professor Misra. Who served as professor at Indira Gandhi Institute of Technology, Saran, Odisha, India, and Sir is acting as the uh, state project administrator of SPI Odisha. We are extremely thankful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation. Now I welcome Professor D. T. Sarode, sir, from Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai. We are grateful to you, sir, for joining the session. Sir is HOD of General Engineering Department at ICT Mumbai. I I would also like to welcome all the participants to the Department of Civil Engineering of Government College of Engineering, Odisha, Odisha. The the institute was was established in the year 1995 and civil engineering branch in 2015. Since Since its inspection, we are trying to be connected with students, faculty members, industry delegates of different states through seminars, expert lectures, webinars, etc. The genuine feedback from your side will will help us to improve further in this field. I wish all success of the seminar and hope. You all will have will having a great positive experience from the seminar, which you may utilize somewhere in your future endeavor. So now, now I request convener of the seminar to give a brief thing. Uh, good morning, one and all present in this inaugural uh, session of the seminar. A respected chief guest, Professor Antaram Mishra Sir, SPI Odisha. respected professor dd sarode sir from ict mumbai respected principal professor trilochan sahu sir gc keunsha chairman of the seminar, seminar professor alok patel uh, professor arar sukla sir uh, and all the hod members of gc keunsha all the faculty members who are present over here and all the faculty members of other institutions and dear participants the title of, of our civil webinar or seminar is innovations and advancements in transportation engineering iat 2020 which is organized by department of civil engineering gc kyawjar odisha have invited 
two eminent speakers from prestigious institutes of India. The first lecture will be delivered by Professor Prashant Kumar Bhuya, who is serving as Assistant Professor in National Institute of Technology, NIT Raurkela. He will give an elaborate idea of transport research practice in India and abroad. The second speaker of the afternoon session is Professor Ankit Kathuria, and he is working as Assistant Professor at Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Jammu. He will be delivering lecture on capacity of a bus transit, uh, transit system in India. So, uh, I anticipate a great knowledge transfer will occur during both the sessions. Again, I thank all the participants for showing their interest and registering for the uh, seminar. Thank you all. And now I would like to uh, I would like to welcome our beloved principal, Professor Tilochan Sausa, to address the forum. Good morning to all of you. Uh, as a head of the institutions, I take the privilege to welcome all of you uh, to this uh, first webinar conducted by Civil Engineering Department of Government College of Engineering, Jamesha. Uh, I want to express my gratitude to Professor Antrai Mishra, uh, who, is, uh, who is giving his support uh, throughout this uh, uh, program. Uh, rather, he is pushing us to the <laughs> <laughs> to the border to conduct this type of program. So it is his consistent uh, encouragement by which we are being able to conduct this type of program. So also I want to uh, extend my uh, gratitude to Professor uh, D.D. Sharode, who is working with us since uh, uh, this uh, beginning of this tech program and the twinning program. And uh, he is giving us idea, he is giving us encouragement uh, how to conduct this type of program. Uh, also, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Sitanshu. Uh, actually, he has uh, arranged this program by himself uh, in a very short notice uh, somehow. So, and he is uh, giving a continuous feedback uh, for this program. So, I expect that this program will be a, a very uh, successful one. For the students, as uh, Sitanshu sir has told, Maybe uh, in a normal situation, we could not have delegates from IIT Jammu or NIT Raoulkala. But this is a situation, this pandemic situation, we take the advantage of this pandemic situation and we are conducting a webinar so that our students can get a chance, the students of other institutes will get a chance to interact with the uh, faculty members, senior faculty members from uh, top institutes. Because uh, for my students, I can say that we cannot. Uh, uh, in many aspects, we are not being able to fulfill your expectations. So these are the situations, or these are the events where you can you can get a chance, you can get a taste of these faculty members from premier institutes. So make it a completely interactive session. Uh, I'll uh, uh, request uh, our the speakers so that they can. Uh, it should not be a monologue. It should be an interactive session so that the students can get a lot of things. They will get a lot of. Uh, they should have a positive expectations and. They should learn a lot of things during this. Uh, maybe uh, there is a presentation of around five hours. So you'll, if you'll attend these programs, then uh, you can say uh, we are going to conduct some other programs uh, by civil engineering department, uh, basing on the outcome of this uh, uh, webinar. So uh, I request all the students be attentive, be interactive, try to extract as much possible as from this faculty member. Thank you all. Thank you again uh, to Professor Antrai Mishra and Professor Sorode. Okay, thank you all. Uh, now I request our uh, uh, Professor and uh, DD Sorode sir from ICT Mumbai to address the forum. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, sir. Professor Mishra from SPIU Odisha, Principal. Sausar from GC Kionzar, Alok Patel, and Sitanshu. I am very glad to see that uh, GC Kionzar is organizing such a uh, innovative uh, science and practices in transportation engineering. Actually, in India, transportation engineering is slightly neglected as compared to other branches of civil engineering. But if you see in the developed countries, lot of scope is there for uh, civil engineering students with specialization in transportation engineering in india also now many institutes are starting master degree program in transportation engineering 
and particularly in metro cities this is very very important and now with the uh, uh, central government spending lot of money on infrastructure development many express way and many uh, mega highways and golden quadrilateral projects are coming up similarly in many uh, cities metro construction is going on and many new cities metro construction is planned so i am sure this today's seminar will be of uh, great help and in will broaden the vision of the people uh, and the students i am extremely thankful for giving me this opportunity i congratulate all the organizing committee members and the uh, tech cube coordinators from both the organizations and support of spiu npiu for uh, encouraging us for such programs i, I am extremely thankful i must inform you all of you that on 14th of this month we are organizing a joint webinar on 2.5 meter plastic pipes used for conveyance of water and waste water pipes uh, water and that is also jointly organized by uh, icd and gc kyonzar and bit mesra and uh, just imagine 2.5 meter diameter pipes so this is the now upcoming innovations in the even you can say a transportation of water from one place to another place because it is particularly useful for waste water because waste water contains lot of corrosive materials chlorides and sulfates so normal steel pipes start corroding and concrete pipes also degrade very fast so this pipe is very very useful and the first installation was done in chennai municipal corporation and now in many places these pipes are used for transportation so with this brief introduction i am extremely thankful for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, and now i request uh, uh, professor antaram misra sir uh, spi odisha to address the forum a very good morning to all of you Good am morning, i audible sir. or not please yes, sir. audible sir audible sir audible okay respected uh, principal of uh, government college of engineering kemjar dr sahu respected dr sarode from icit mumbai and the coordinator of this program dr sitan subhas and other dignitaries and delegates to who are attending i am able to see that around 192 participants are here i am extremely happy that after a lot of persuasion at least gc kevinder has gone for one webinar and that too a boring topic which is innovations and advances in transportation engineering probably i am a misfit to a group of fits because i belong to mechanical engineering and whatever common sense and knowledge and based on my experience i will be speaking few lines on this aspect of civil engineering basically transportation is a part and parcel of the community life or the society to run it is necessary from time immemorial you can see that such type of engineering nomenclature was not available but people were moving from one place to the other either by land which is a small route or by water and on a later day you will find that air travel is possible so land transportation cons is consisting of roads and railways and so on so forth initially in hilly areas or what our border road organization is doing the construction of roads that is necessary for strategic importance and for defense or maximizing economy of the country as well as state so that goods and people we call them passengers and they can be carried away from one place to the other that too the objective of transportation is that it must be safe it must be convenient 
rather i would say that in computer language it must be user friendly and it must be com uh, a green technology should be adopted for transportation as far as you see the railways they are going on expanding their in india especially they are going on expanding their activities starting from surface engineering of laying tracks to underground metro and as well as tunneling in hill areas like jammu and kashmir and other places and recently we have seen that our engineers they have gone ahead for making a tunnel to connect ladakh to chamba and that is the marvel of engineering apart from that the bridges which are constructed in jammu and kashmir especially the structural which are needed for this and the structural design is of utmost importance to the present day engineers and further development is necessary as far as water transportation is concerned india is having a vast coastal belt and you see excepting north east west south they are all having the coastal belt and inland water transport is also very much essential in certain cases for bet having better communication so as far as our my knowledge is concerned around 5000 or odd canals and rivers and uh, creeks as well as uh, backwater they are used in india for ferry purpose or otherwise transport purposes of goods and passengers similarly in the ocean transport we are having cargo as well as passengers in the shipping international transport system including oil tankers and others and heavy machinery equipment they are easily carried by shipping and other things the third part is the air transport reading from the newspapers what i have got that there are around 489 airports available which includes 34 international airports in india rest domestic airports or for military surveillance or helipads and flying schools so imagine the quantum of work that is needed as far as this government is concerned the roads whether it is express highway national highway state highway major district roads or rural roads or roads that is being constructed by the prime minister gramya sadak yojana the target is in pmg gsy that we reach 2 lakh kilometers because rural connectivity that takes care of 70% of our road structure whereas 21% is for national highways or state highways and express highways they are very less around 200 300 kilometers apart from that the urban roadways or the traffic that is of utmost importance because around so many cities have now been declared as smart cities so design and construction of flyovers bridges other structures that is needed by efficient engineers and the budding engineers of our country so in urbanization whether it is a arterial road or sub arterial road or collector whatever it is whatever knowledge that i have gained i am speaking i have i have not prepared anything from the newspapers and other things and based on my experience and now it has to be very smooth and eco friendly airport runway design and airport building design for efficient air traffic control and eradicating the accidents that is prone to landing and take off of airport is of utmost importance because the chance of survival of passenger is almost zero in case of accident in a air accident so the role of transportation engineer is very much important those who will be working under airport authority of india or anywhere question comes how safely how quickly i reach the destination or my goods that will reach destination or the industrial products that reach destination that is of utmost importance so under circumstances the construction materials that is used for roads and bridges whether it is cement concrete 
or bitumen or your asphalt or aggregates or geosynthetic materials or composite materials like rubber crumbs and other things that is used in highways nowadays so that the water absorption capacity and other tests all of you civil engineers you know what are the tests we conducted for reinforced cement concrete or portland cement concrete are making the material less porous high abrasion resistance and having high impact and compressive strength so that the load carrying capacity of the roads and other structures can be increased so friends nowadays the latest technique is that you have to use the green technology you have to use the plastic waste which is huge in number huge in quantity and you have to go for cold mix technology which is to be used these are the advanced materials for construction of transportation engineering roads or anything apart from metallic materials which is used as a steel or aluminium or other structurals for bridges of course the latest concept is that the ropeway bridges we are making or ropeways are being constructed from one hill top to the another hill top to go and for tourist purposes also this is most used otherwise if the transportation is not there every economic activities of the society and the state and the country will come to a stand still and it will be totally zero we cannot live we have to live and we have to see that certain innovations and advancements must be made in this respect i would like to request my friends to who are attending or the so called civil engineers dr tilochan sau and dr sarode or sitan sudha who are present they must lead that how future skills can be applied to this as far as traffic management is concerned traffic engineering is concerned pavement design is concerned pavement analysis is concerned and safety and environmental engineering with respect to transportation engineering is concerned that is of importance internet of things cloud computing and of course one part we have already seen that through google and gps positioning we can track vehicles commercial vehicles and other things of course similarly traveler controlling or traveling travelers detection and traffic control is in urban areas especially i am not talking about rural areas but in urban areas that is very important in order to prevent accidents and provide safety to the passengers as well as goods so the research in traffic engineering traffic management and environmental management and so on and so forth including materials which will cause less damage to the global warming uh, less damage to the roads as well as global uh, restrict the carbon emissions right so those things are necessary nowadays to go ahead with innovations and scientific research besides that some explorations can be made as far as nano composites are concerned because nano composites when you use in civil engineering applications it will greatly reduce the level of porosity or permeability so that the strength of the material will increase that's why I, what i intend to say to all of you i hope this works up with the presence of learned members and experts to whom i have got all my respect will be a very fruitful one and again i am repeating whatever i have told you is just out of common sense and knowledge because of reading newspapers or going through the tv and other things and i am definitely a misfit to a group of fit but to a misfit you have given such a chance to speak to all of you i am grateful to the coordinator to the principal of kenjar but he is my student so probably he has got more affinity towards me or weakness towards me to call me as a chief guest to such a technical delivery thank you very much mr principal and professor sarode from icit mumbai excuse me if i have spoken anything wrong kindly rectify it and please go ahead thank you very much 
No, sir, it's very encouraging. <laughs> Being a mechanical engineer, you, are, you spoke about transportation engineering. Really, <laughs> it's very good. Very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for sharing your vast experience with all of us, sir. And we, your, uh, uh, we are honored to have you, sir. Uh, sir, for your kind information, we have received around uh, more than two, 250 participants from various institutes. Participants are from different colleges of India, including many faculty members also. Uh, without your kind support, it, it may not be possible to organize this uh, webinar. And thank you so much, sir. We are very much grateful to you. Now I request Professor uh, Rakesh Rajan Sukla uh, to give vote of thanks. Oh, Honorable Chief Guest, Professor Antirami Mishra, sir. Our most value invited guest, Professor Dilip Sarode, sir. Respected Principal, Professor Trilochan Sao. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of Government College of Engineering Kyonjar, and my own behalf, extend a very heartly vote of thanks to all speakers for gracing your important work and sharing with us your finding and opinion today. A big thank you to Professor Antaryami Misra, sir, for his efforts towards education and highlighting the strategic importance of transportation. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to Professor Dilip Sarode, sir, for explanation of importance of transportation engineering in the coming days in India. Further, we are grateful to Head of Department Professor Alok Patel for demonstrating about the Civil Engineering Department of GC Kyonjar in a lucid manner. I may like to express our sincere thanks to Professor Sitansu Kumar Das for giving an, giving an excellent coverage of this event, IATE 2020. And at last, I also wish to express my gratitude to Professor Tilochan Sahu for providing encouragement and support at every stage. I would like to thank, take this opportunity to place on record our heartly thanks to participants. Lastly, I thank all the members of the organizing committee and all my colleagues who have been involved to make this event a grand success. Thank you all once again, and we look forward to an extremely productive session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sukla, sir. And thank you all. Thank you all the delegates, sir. Now I request all the participants to be remain present. Uh, our session will start within five minutes. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. I have sent the link in the chat box. Yeah, yeah. Share to all the participants. Okay. Uh, chat box, I think they can copy it from here, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, all the participants, please uh, go through the chat box. Uh, uh, the link uh, uh, is provided for the registration for the seminar that is being conducted by uh, Professor Sarode of ICD Mumbai. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Once I am leaving. Sarode, sir, I am leaving. Yes, sir. Thank you.
सर हमें ऑडिबल सर प्लीज ऑन म्यूट योर सेल्फ प्रशांत सर सर प्लीज ऑन म्यूट योर सेल्फ सर योर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल सर सर योर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल सर
हाँ हाँ ओ ना आई थिंक इट्स फाइन अबे अबे शुरू से ओके फाइन am i audible hello sitan so am i audible yes sir uh, dear participants uh, we are extremely fortunate to have professor prashant kumar bhuye sir for our seminar we are extremely thankful to him Sir has completed PhD from IIT Bombay and now continuing as assistant professor at NIT Raoulkela, Odisha since 2011. He has guided many number of MTech students and PhD students and more than 50 publications in various reputed journals. His area of interest is traffic engineering and transportation planning. On behalf of organizing team, and I, uh, I welcome you, sir, to the seminar to deliver your lecture and hope participants will. We'll be having a great conversation with you. Thank you, sir. And please start the lecture, sir. So, thank you, Sitanshu, for introducing. Uh, so, very good morning to all of you, uh, Principal Sir, and the Head of Civil Engineering. Um, uh, then, uh, I think uh, some faculty colleagues are also there, and some uh, masters and PhD students, sir. So. Um, Uh, before uh, going to the uh, exact topic, so uh, what uh, we'll discuss here today for next one and a half year, so half hour. Um, first, I will discuss about uh, some basics about transportation engineering. What are the problems that we are uh, or challenges we are facing in India, and then we'll discuss what are the uh, academic and research scope uh, in India as well as abroad. uh then we'll discuss um what are the other opportunity like industrial opportunity or uh so that way we'll discuss in more elaborate form so uh first uh, the the transportation system uh, all of you know uh, it consists of uh, all modes of transportation you have the surface uh, transportation that is uh, on road uh, then you have uh, air transport and you have the ship transportation system then uh, whether it is all about passenger carrying vehicles you know, actually it is combination of your passenger as well commercial traffic so how to optimize utilize the resource that we have uh, so or how to coordinate the manner we can use our transportation for the betterment of the society so that is the question mark so if you see the a uh, development of our transportation system so it was originally you can say uh, animal drawn vehicle then you have uh, the steam engine then gradually uh, you have uh, the petrol or diesel driven vehicles now we are moving towards the uh, pollution free um, uh, vehicle system and the next step we are going towards driver like less vehicle system the surface transport system all of you know uh, it consists of uh, different types of vehicles and particularly on indian road 22 types of vehicles are plying the study uh, or to know the behavior or the flow characteristics of this 22 types of vehicles is uh, really challenging for the say researchers and the planners or the designers who are doing the job on the field whereas in the western country all of you know that the number of or mode of transportation are very limited 
so while you do you know the simulation kind of thing uh, for this heterogeneous trophic condition so it is completely much easier uh, whereas in india while uh, we are trying to simulate the traffic scenario on our say a congested road or say any type of road then uh, you, you will face a lot of challenge uh, a simple example is that suppose uh, you are taking videography of a particular type of vehicle then you will find that all of a sudden a small vehicle is coming coming to it so that way uh, hello, hello. ha bola so so there there will be overlap uh, in the say one mode of transportation to another mode of transportation so it will create trouble for to know exactly which type of vehicle we are focusing the water transport system uh, it also uh, you know uh, very significant for a nation uh, but unfortunately in india we have not uh utilize the potential that we have you know we have uh, we are surrounded by uh, um, uh, arabian sea and way of bengal so that way uh, we have very tremendous potential uh, particularly uh, for commercial or say goods carrying uh, we, um, ship point of view but uh, the utilization is very less in india so far where china has uh, sig significantly utilized is uh, say water space uh, so one more uh, uh, you know big challenge that at present uh, we have in india about the infrastructure in the sea ports uh, particularly the handling capacity uh, the goods handling capacity so all way you all together you can say the uh, operational efficiency uh, at the sea ports uh, has to significantly improve if india want to really uh, become export and uh, import oriented uh, uh, country like china china uh, almost utilizes uh, 40% whereas we have utilized only say 2% of Uh, our total potential that we can have of course in the recent past uh, we have focused on uh, you know development of uh, many uh, sea ports um, and uh, the connectivity and to the our uh, main stream uh, say traffic flow like you have the expressways or you have the uh, major uh, national highways that is the golden quadrilateral so so like uh if you go to the nhi site national highway authority of india site so they have different phasing like in one particular phase they have developed this golden quadrilateral then uh, in another phase they have developed uh, this uh, seaport connectivity uh, like you have you know uh, other like uh, uh, dedicated freight corridor so uh, def de different phase phasing plants are there so that way uh, the connectivity to the mainstream traffic flow uh, to the seaport connectivity that means uh, uh, in the present form uh, you, you may find that uh, the road infrastructures particularly um, need to be uh, augmented that means uh, it's uh, Uh, traffic carrying capacity has to be enhanced significantly so apart to this your uh, road uh, uh, transportation the rail connectivity to the sea ports is also equally important that has to be uh, focused now coming to the air transport system um, of course in the last one and two decade our uh, uh, passenger carrying traffic uh, has uh increase significantly at the same time uh, we could uh, develop uh, some major air force as well as some you can say minor air force uh, but uh, 
the commercial uh, uh, traffic that uh, is still missing so there was a big project in india uh, long back so that was called mihan and that is for the improvement of uh, our uh, uh, you know um, that uh, nagpur airport so nagpur is strategically uh, located in such a place where you know uh, the distance to any any part of india uh, is less so uh, but uh, because of something this project was uh, you know slow and i think still it is going slow um, but this is the one area uh, we should also focus for the development now now coming to uh, uh, the transportation system in, in general uh, how the transportation system basically grow or how the transportation system you know um, uh, it, it's basically you know demand and supply concept because because, because the transportation demand is not you know direct uh, kind of thing it is something like the derived demand so in order to fulfill something uh, we require transportation system so that way uh, there there is always one equilibrium between your supply and your demand so what is that equilibrium so at a particular uh, uh, say uh, supply then our demand will be uh, fulfill of course this is a relative term uh, because human expectation is you know always unlimited but somehow uh, we have our satisfaction level uh, particularly while availing the service quality uh, of any infrastructure or any transport system so that way uh, we, we you know can't provide uh, very best quality of service for limited number of users and also at the same time we should not uh, 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 bring our service level to that low so that uh, the whole system will become you know less attractive so that way uh, when our demand over time our demand is increasing so in order to fulfill that then we are providing better and better facility coming to the transportation planning process why transportation planning is so important because you know that uh, through planning only your development will become you know systematic um, otherwise whole things will uh, become mess up so the management concept like the traffic management uh, say what we are doing uh, may, that is short term only uh, up to three to five years you visualize something then you take some steps and uh, you try to bring some solution for that whereas in the planning process you try to uh, model uh, the whole process from your say historical data sets okay and uh, you, you try to uh, validate your model for the present condition or the for the base condition then you try to forecast for the future so that future again is uh, of uh, a different time frame maybe after say five years what will happen after 10 years so after 20 years and after say 30 years normally uh, we go up to 30 years that is the horizon year not beyond that because after 30 years many things may change so normally we don't go beyond 30 years uh, so in the in the planning process you know uh, we we always have some study area focus area this study area again uh, you know uh, it can be a particular city or it can be a region okay so or it can be you know state level or it can be national level planning now so that way first of all we must have to identify the study area then uh, we, we have to uh, make it smaller smaller zones sort of zone zones having homogeneous or similar uh, property 
then uh, we try to uh, uh, forecast and uh, for the future using different kind of modeling concept i mean that uh, i will discuss more detail about how we model uh, for the forecasting and a mathematical model of course is very much essential uh, then say you have given alternative one alternative two alternative three alternative four w what are those alternative basically you know the future is uncertain you are um, expecting that something will come in the future suppose you are expecting say after five years uh, your uh, high capacity bus system will come then after 10 years a light rail transit system will come then after 20 years um, um, you know metro rail will come but all, all are our assumptions only so accordingly to our assumptions uh, we try to uh, develop different scenarios okay so then we we try to evaluate uh, different scenarios and uh, then of course decision body is someone maybe your uh, so you know uh, chief engineer or maybe your bureaucrat or maybe your politician or maybe combination of all this so of course um, as a technocrats uh, as a you know developer or say planner our job is to give the different alternatives and uh, help uh, the authority in deciding the best alternative uh, of course uh, the decision normally now you know are, are taken in a much better manner because the whole thing uh, you can show uh, in a much graphical or pictorial form that really helps to the decision body to take the right decision uh, when the best alternative is selected then uh, we have to uh, implement that okay so once you are implementing a particular alternative then you have to monitor its performance uh, with time period mean to say that uh, you have selected alternative one or alternative two, uh, maybe alternative three, one of them, and you have implemented. Then uh, our job is to check how our selection is working fine or there need some modification or some alternation uh, in the our uh, uh, selection. So this is very uh, uh, traditional or say four stage travel demand modeling okay so the transportation uh, forecasting or say demand modeling normally um, carried out in four steps the first step is about trip generation the second step is about trip distribution the third stage is about modal split and the fourth is about traffic assignment in the uh, in the very first stage what do we do we try to find the number of trips or say travel you can say that are uh, generating from a particular zone so zones you know is like a homogeneous homogeneous you can say uh, uh, people having uh, similar or say um, uh, poor household income level say so that that is you can say common uh, of all the household uh, some way we have to uh, try to create some similarity in that particular zone uh, then uh, there is always uh, assumed to be one zone centroid so zone centroid is the one where you assume that all the traffic will be uh, generate or all the traffic will terminate at that point so that means while you are selecting the zone uh, uh, from a uh, whole area we have to be very judicious means to say that uh, the zone should not be very large or the zone should not be very small if you make the zone very small the number of zones will become uh, so large it's difficult to manage say example say the Mumbai city Mumbai is a very big city so they have selected uh, around 100 internal zones and four to five external zones okay so like you have the greater mumbai region okay so then you are dividing to 100 internal zones outside say you are like nabi mumbai or thane and some other areas 
so selecting uh, this zone is itself uh, one uh, big job okay for say, other small cities we can uh, take less number of uh, zones then once uh, you are selecting the uh, number of zones then we try to uh, find the trip that generate from a particular zone so that uh, trip uh, generation uh, depends on what factors so your population is one important parameter then employment um, employment you can say for single unit the unit here you can say household so based on that, we try to fit some kind of uh, uh, regression equation or there are some other kind of uh, modeling approaches also there like category analysis through that we forecast the number of trips that can be generated from a particular zone uh, over time period. Okay. The second step is about trip distribution. The trip distribution says that how the traffic can be distributed from a particular say zone so the number of trips that are generated from a particular zone can go to say different different zones but on what basis we will distribute that is a question mark so there are different types of concept like um, the uniform method the average method the gravity model so you know the, the gravity model is very popul popular one so what what is basically the gravity model this gravity model it it, it simulates um, with our you know gravitational force so the gravitational force you know uh, you know m1 into m2 divided by your distance in terms of the square or whatever so basically it, it is like in in the similar fashion here uh, we, we try to find uh, what is the potential of trip generation from a particular zone, what is the potential of uh, trip uh, that is attracted to a particular zone, and what is the distance between these two. Um, that, that you can give any power, simple or square or cube or whatever. So that, that way uh, we try to distribute the traffic from one zone to another, another zone. Uh, so th this thing, you know, uh, can be done uh, through your OD matrix, okay? Because the trip generation and distribution, this thing, while you uh, try to solve in the real life, you will find that the number of data points you are handling is very huge. So it is uh, um, very difficult to manage your data points or uh, using very simple techniques so that way we, we must be very good in you know uh, solving our uh, say matrix so here in the uh, distribution stage you can say that uh, you can classify the trips based on the modes okay different modes of the transportation then you can classify uh, according to uh, different commodity you know suppose uh, you know uh, kemjer is very popular for your mines and minerals okay so so you can assume that uh, kemjer is one zone in odisha then you can say uh, paradip or jagasingpur is another zone then while you are trying to distribute okay in the distribution stage the commodity wise uh, the, that the mineral resource that is going from Kenjo to different parts like the Paradeep, Haldi Airport, Bishapatnam Airport, like that. So that that way we, we, you distribute. Okay. So that the how how it very basically because the seaport that here we are saying has certain potential. Okay. Uh, so accordingly or distance distance primarily distance sometimes say if you are focusing about uh, passenger carrying vehicles okay then travel time and uh, you know uh, utility basically utility again depends upon the money you know whether it is for someone time may be important for someone your money may be important and uh, for somebody the combination uh, you know so your time travel time is also money if you can say that 
so that way uh, we try to distribute the total traffic that generated from a particular zone now the third step is about say modal split so what is about modal split split in the mode okay so that is modal split because um, the users use different uh, modes of transportation particularly in india we have so many so then uh, how to distribute uh, the traffic say two two major competent here you can say one is private mode of transportation another is public mode of transportation okay then further we can classify so so one thing that is um, uh, normally considered so that is called utility function so that utility function is a function of your say in vehicle travel time you have the waiting time then you have parking charges that you are paying likewise five six parameters normally you consider and you say develop one utility function so then uh, you have uh, uh, you know binary if you if you have two competent like one is private mode of transportation another is a public mode of transportation so then you apply the binary logic model and distribute it's like probability kind of distribution how what is the probability that the uh, uh, public mode uh, will get this percentage of the total trip okay so here the uh, point is that um, if you want to restructure your fare system so okay suppose the tolling system uh, of the buses that flying on a city level you can increase uh, say 10 paisa per kilometer or you can decrease 10 paisa per kilometer the other to one uh, then uh, accordingly while you are changing the fare structure your utility function will change when your utility function is changing uh, then the probability of uh, going to a particular mode private mode or uh, public mode will also change so that way it it helps us in taking the decision you know like you do some exercise you change the money and uh, of course uh, it is not just about uh, changing the money and doing the calculation uh, it is more complex uh, in fact you have to take the view of the users the public you know the satisfaction level so that way uh, it is uh, complex and uh, finally uh, we try to uh, distribute the uh, traffic here here comes another thing you know that suppose uh, you have the public transportation system or you can say that you want to introduce one more public transport system okay and uh, the public transport system you know uh, perhaps nowhere in the world is profitable kind of organization it is it is not profitable it is our social obligation and uh, uh, we have to improve our public transport system okay. because it is mass carrying uh, vehicle system. So that way, um, while you are uh, uh, focusing say on public transport system and you want to introduce one new system, uh, then you have to go through this uh, modal split system. You know, um, there you have to take the stated preference you know stated preference survey uh, you make some questionnaire then you try to uh, take the view of the uh, users potential users you can say then you can show them different alternatives so at present you have this sort of uh, public transport system now we are planning to give this much you know luxurious transport system but you have to pay this much your travel time will be this different scenario uh, you can show to the users you know so public involvement is very important here you can say uh, so that way um, you catch as many as uh, uh, distributed sample then you try to develop there is some modeling approach here also uh, that you collect through your uh, 
revealed or stated preference survey. Uh, so that that will be used as input to your say utility function and finally you uh, take the so there there you can say that uh, there is competition among uh, this public mode of transportation say bus system then you have the rail system local train system then again metro system uh, likewise now now if you consider all the public transport system then you have the private mode of transportation then on private you have the you know car traffic then you have say uh, two-wheeler traffic well you combine I and mean, it become more complex so it is not binary now so it is multinomial logic model and there are several techniques um, uh, you can say that uh, through which we can solve it now here here in one point i can say something about the modal split there is one indian origin professor in uh, university of texas at austin his name is professor c r bhat chandra r bhat he has contributed significantly uh, i think he is the most renowned figure in this area modal split model uh, c r bhat professor chandra r bhat and uh, he has given so many new new concepts about this modal split model and before that uh, we are uh, discussing something about utility function say so the utility function you know uh, it was uh, developed by professor macfarden so is professor macfarden uh, is uh, in fact he was from university of california berkeley you know in the san francisco bay area they have uh, bart but bay area rapid transit system so focusing on that bay area rapid transit system although he was one you know economist but he spent whole life in transportation research and he has given many concept uh, of this uh, about utility function and all these okay fine so now coming to the trip assignment or traffic assignment so this is the last stage of our four stage travel demand modeling so what basically you do we try to distribute or assign not distribute basically you can say assign we assign the total traffic that we are expecting in the future over the road network okay so what is this road network so the road network as you know it consists of your nodes nodes are your junctions and your links links are your mid blocks okay so you you can say take the information you digitize the whole road network then you collect all the information that you have right now okay but we are not distributing the traffic for the present day okay so this is one exercise so for the base year or the present year okay but our target is for the future that is for the horizon year so for the horizon means there is something new to come i mean in the road network itself some uh, road, new road links may come the existing roads it has its uh, capacity limit and uh, that way we can augment or we can uh, you can you know uh, we can add more number of lanes to the existing road that way uh, we can uh, distribute more traffic to the road in the future uh, there may be some uh, other link like you know say uh, local train you know like uh, we are expecting for the future when the number of the trips so here the trip is more important than your population okay of course population and trip are linked but again your economic status many, many things that that does matter basically so that way we try to distribute the total uh, traffic or assign the total traffic uh, on the um, futuristic road network now the question is uh, how to assign okay uh, there are different techniques um, 
uh, in fact uh, there is something called all or nothing assignment you know our uh, tendency is always to follow the shortest path you know so if everybody who is originating from a particular say area or zone and has a particular say destination you want to go somewhere and everybody you want to go follow the same path because it is the one uh, having less travel time you can say then there is problem there will be congestion you know and the road link has its capacity limit okay so then that means the concept of capacity constraint or capacity restraint come to the picture okay now uh, if you say uh, no no right now you know we have so many information systems we are uh, even in the fm radio we are giving the information to the users uh, please take the other path like the you know there is a traffic jam there is something like that so this is something about dynamic traffic assignment okay so i mean the whole i mean if you say the google is doing this job so how google is doing this job because google is taking some algorithm in the software so this algorithm you know in the trip assignment part you have several you know um, uh, methods he has taken a particular algorithm i mean it is it is basically prediction only i mean it is telling that uh, if you follow this path then it will take 10 minutes if you follow this path so it is basically the experience or the uh, data uh, recent past that is the trend accordingly uh, it is predicting this much of time it will take uh, depending on the traffic scenario in say like that so that way um, uh, we have discussed something about the four stage travel demand modeling now now let's discuss something about modeling principle so basically uh, what uh, we do uh, to develop one particular type of model the simplest and the most you know uh, popular modeling approach is about regression based model here uh, you have suppose y and you have a uh, plus b into x okay so y is the predicted uh, variable you can say that uh, depends on your x variable x is dependent variable then our target is to fix two things one is a and b the a that is uh, the constant and uh, b are the coefficients now this b b can be b1 and many parameters may be there b1 b2 b3 b3 like that, that, that. so that way uh, first of all while you try to develop in uh, a model you should know the variables the independent variables the x variable x1 x2 x3 x3 then how to know or how to find your uh, this independent variable because you are trying to model something which of course depends upon several variables so that variables while you are either taking from your literature review i mean you have gone through several literatures but keep in mind that literature will not give you everything because the problem uh, particularly the transportation problem is different from place to place from country to country so if you simply follow the literature then you perhaps you will omit several important variables or parameters in in that case what we can do here is uh, okay you do literature survey what us people are doing the japanese are doing say australia so like that you can take those variables apart to that you go to the field you or you can take the view of the um, public so what parameters basically influence them to the maximum okay. then you go and do some statistical check whether the variable that you are considering are really different from one to another or there is lot of similarity exist among these variables 
that is collinearity okay we try to minimize those collinearity because all the variables should have different from one to another that way uh, we try to uh, find the coefficient a and v and uh, develop the equation that equation we try to use now let us discuss something some fundamental parameters uh, about say traffic or transportation engineering you can say that so all of you know about the speed okay speed is one important parameter that is used in the uh, traffic flow you know analysis again the speed are of different types like you have the spot speed you have the journey speed you have the again further you have the time in speed space mean speed uh, speed different speed parameters so while you are using your radar gun say the police is taking uh, or using on the roadside the radar gun at a particular point so then the kind of speed he is taking is about spot speed okay suppose uh, you want to take the average speed over a stretch say one kilometer length so how you can do you can fix your gps on your vehicle then you travel and you can take the average okay then so that speed there is at some point is accelerating deceleration at some point is stopping so like that so the kind of speed that you are getting is about journey speed okay and also the here the journey speed is a space mean speed okay another parameter is uh, flow so flow is nothing but how many number of vehicles that is passing uh, at a particular time duration at a particular point say you are standing there then you are counting say car traffic truck traffic bus traffic two wheeler traffic so when you are calculating the number of vehicles over a time period then that is called classified traffic classified means you are separating one type of traffic to another type of traffic this classified traffic volume is very much important particularly in the traffic flow analysis then another parameter is density so density is nothing but the number of vehicles over a stretch of the road at a particular time period say suppose you have 1 km length of the road okay somewhere if you are using uh, some drone or something and uh, you are able to calculate uh, or you you have your video camera which is placed at very high then you are able to see half kilometer on either side uh, say then you can catch or you can to image you can capture how many number of vehicles are there within that 1 kilometer length so the density here uh, in transportation or traffic term is the number of vehicles per unit length of the road so these three parameters uh, uh, so they, they are also related that is q is equal to ku k is equal to your density u is your speed and q is equal to your flow okay so if you see this uh, diagram okay the speed um, at say while your density is zero okay then your speed is maximum while your density is increasing gradually so then there is something you call jam density okay very traffic jam in the jam condition there is no speed okay. so that kind of relationship exists between your speed and the density similarly uh, what kind of relation exists between your speed and the flow so when there is very less traffic you can travel at very high speed so you can say that that is free flow condition so in the free flow condition we can achieve maximum speed so what is free flow condition so these free flow conditions are normally when the signals are free in the night say after night 11 12 or something up to morning 5 6 o'clock signals are free you can travel at very high speed 
so as your speed is you know that is the maximum speed that is the free flow speed you know so that is the one maximum here you can say so as the traffic volume or the flow is increasing gradually then your speed will automatically reduce okay so at a particular speed you have the maximum flow okay q max so that 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 sort of relationship exist between your speed and the flow now coming to the third one here that is the kind of relationship that is flow and density okay uh, if you see while the density is zero i mean density zero means in a, a stretch of the road there is no traffic okay when the density is zero the flow is zero and when the density is maximum again there is no flow it is jam condition so that way the mid part that is jam by 2 jam density by 2 at that scenario or that condition you have the maximum flow i think now uh, we can have a clear picture about uh, all these three things how they are related so in simple form you can say q is maximum when u is average average speed and k is average okay that means jam density by 2 then u is free flow speed by 2 so we will have maximum flow well our speed is half of the, our free flow speed and density is half of the jam density to carry of uh, this planning process traffic management you need a large number of data points so data is really challenging in this field and reliable data points particularly so you need uh, different types of uh, servings uh, some of the popular servings are like you know uh, is about od survey so origin and destiny survey origin and destiny survey are normally conducted in the road side you take help of some police personnel go to the road side stop the vehicle go and ask to the driver sir where or uh, what is your origin point what is your destination because you have the, your zones hai right? na you are focusing on a particular uh, study area so that means uh, what is the zone from where you have started your journey what is your journey where the journey will terminate how frequently you are traveling what is the purpose of your travel whether it is school going whether it is you know going for recreation or you have some you know we can travel or you are going to some spiritual place or social gathering several several things are there so that way uh, we try to capture that so this is one technique i am telling you that is called road side interview uh but there are several other methods like you know you can give simply a postcard to him sir can you just fill it and send to me in this particular address so this is another option now is you know the google questionnaire or form is important or very popular so easily you can uh, send it and you can take that od survey the second type of surveying uh, is about household survey this is very you know tedious uh, survey uh particularly if the city is very big where the people don't trust one to another so but uh if you are doing some transportation planning and all these jobs so you have to do so in mumbai say in the year say 2006 and 7 in that time there was a big survey in mumbai so that was part of your uh, city ts comprehensive uh, traffic and transportation survey and uh, they have uh, collected some 70000 household survey sample to gather this big data sets is really very very challenging and how to utilize that large number of data points okay so in the questionnaire you can put several things uh, what is your household structure i mean how many number of members are there what is your income level i mean 
person to person you can take then uh, then you have the trip or travel pattern because that is important for us vehicle ownership you can take car ownership is very important here you can say and uh, likewise you can uh, design your questionnaire again depends upon you, the questionnaire should not be too complicated or too large uh, otherwise some participant and uh, they will not answer all the question halfway they will simply skip so that way the questionnaire is not a very you know standard one we, we can alter it or we can change according to our requirement the third one is about tvc traffic volume count so this is very popular one so like i told you about the classified traffic volume count you know so on a particular part uh, you can stand or on either side of the road and uh, you can with the help of some other enumerators you can collect the uh, mode wise traffic volume every 15 minutes interval likewise say for 24 hours normally the traffic volume count are conducted uh, 24 hours uh, 7 days uh, for any major planning process or serve but if you have less time then you should go three days of traffic volume count if you are st still less time then you can go for 24 hour survey if you are still less time then you should go at least 16 hour survey okay so why 16 hours why not 12 hours 16 hour because our focus is always about peak hour traffic okay so in the 16 hours you can get two peak hours one is the morning peak hours another is the evening peak hours okay uh, so normally the survey uh, start in the morning seven o'clock okay and uh, continue like that so if you are not using manpower because in india you know uh, in the large country then we have so many semi-skilled personnel also there so whole uh, traffic volume count can be done using your video camera if you can uh, take the video then you write some coding and uh, you can fix the projection of your camera uh, on the vehicles i mean because the camera position here is also important and uh, accordingly you can find the projected area of the vehicle type then if you write some coding then you can can calculate continuously that uh, in US at uh, several uh, important roads they have their video camera almost throughout US they have video camera in Indian National Highway also gradually we are trying to adopt that but still we have that consideration about utilizing some manpower okay, in the traffic volume count the other kind of survey uh, we uh, do here is about inventory survey inventory survey is nothing but about you know uh, to know more detail about the geometric features of the road so then uh, road inventory survey uh, traditionally we use some kind of questionnaire paperwork you know but nowadays it is very convenient if you have your some gps in the GPS itself, there are some softwares, so you can design your own questionnaire. Okay, you just take that and uh, fill. Uh, uh, you can keep option different, you know, so that way you can fill. So the one good part here you will have the data here you are getting is already in the digitized form. So while you come to your office, just transfer it and. Uh, overlap it over your say GIS base map then directly you will get all the information along the road how your inventory is changing okay so these things inventory uh, is very much required uh, particularly while uh, you are developing your road network because road network is the first step of your planning process nobody will give you the road network so the road network that you are uh, finding so is about say paper form okay now you have to convert it into digitized form that means you have to digitize the road network you have to give the attributes of each and every link of the whole large road network about the junction or the node points so you can 
uh, take uh, the, those and also we can give the input about the traffic you know so when all the informations are there you know GIS base map database management then you can play it there okay number of analysis you can do there in GIS itself and after onwards if you want to see about uh, pictorial you know or graphical form how it is changing from one road link to another road link that you can do other important studies uh, normally carried out about parking study accident studies congestion studies and pedestrian studies parking study is important um, because every city in the world you can say they are facing this parking problem uh, bigger the city more more you have the problem or challenge so that way the parking uh, broadly uh, here in India we can say are following about on street parking the parking can be also off street parking okay, multi storied parking system now also developing when the city will become it is uh, very natural we should have a designated parking space and there you have to pay for hour how much so that way your cost if you are using private mode of transport or your own car will escalate parking will parking fees you have to pay the parking survey are of different types um, then you can uh, know or find the parking demand you can uh, know the efficiency of the present parking facility you can even simulate the parking and uh, you can predict for the future and uh, accordingly you can uh, give facility for the future but uh, the question is that if your city become very weak and uh, you are trying to search one parking space okay? uh, say in Japan now they they can give this information you know on the roadside there is a parking say um, building and uh, in the this number of floor uh, this number of parking slots are available so then you can go to that parking space now coming to the accident studies so this is really one area uh, now everybody is very much concerned about particularly in India because the number of people uh, dying every year in India is really uh, Orisham, more than one lakh population are dying every year, one lakh thirty thousands or so, and uh, number of you know other you know minor major injuries is much more, maybe four five lakh. So, what basically we try to do in the accident stories, we try to locate the place where the accident occurred. Uh, this is the first job. Mm, then we try to find the cause of the accident why the accident occurred like the your CBI investigate you know, to a particular case uh, here in the accident uh, case also uh, we can restructure or we can uh, come from the river side how the accident may occur okay so restructuring uh, of the accident scenario so that way we can find the cause of the accident but uh, unfortunately if you follow the FR report first information report of our you know police station then you will find that uh, almost 95 percent um, they report it as fault of the driver okay it, it is careless driving okay uh, my master thesis was on this aspect uh, accident analysis then I have uh, at least observed a six police station report uh, 10 years report uh, but the case may not be exactly the same okay so as a designer as a planner as an engineer we can contribute something okay uh, for better design okay better visibility uh, I mean accordingly we can design many aspects and uh, we can 
study the psychology of the driver and accordingly we can provide some facility this is a one very large I mean big area this accident black spot everybody for us know something about what is about accident black spot where the maximum number of accident occurs and uh, how we can you know, give some remedy okay now coming to the congestion studies so this congestion uh, perhaps is a very uh, you know hot topic in India uh, the number of big cities in India we have several big cities because we have less space you can say space wise we have one third of say US or China or something like that but our population is large so population density is very large and uh, over time period you can say that um, uh, our mm, number of vehicles are also increasing okay uh, so that way uh, to tackle this congestion issue uh, we have to discourage the private mode of transportation okay so but unfortunately it is just the reverse uh, people are having you know more money so they can easily afford uh, a particular vehicle okay and uh, so that way the congestion is increasing so to reduce the congestion there are several management uh, issues you can do that one of them is about congestion pricing okay so this congestion pricing scheme uh, in fact was developed in UK long back uh, for London City uh, the congestion pricing the simple concept is like this in a particular say city area so that is normally called say CBD central business district where the maximum activity uh, go on you can charge extra money to the users if they come in a particular hour only not throughout the day okay so this is something called about cordon base a particular area based congestion pricing system but there are a lot of uh, legal issues you know the as a user as a customer or say I can say that already I am paying so much of money um, say for my petrol or diesel We're taking more than 50% of my total money that I am giving for the development of this road infrastructures and all then why I will pay more okay so that means there are a lot of legal issues if you charge uh, this congestion extra money so that's why uh, the congestion pricing perhaps in, in India it is nowhere at present it is Bombay they are planning but still they are not able to do that uh, so likewise now there is something about pedestrian studies so you know pedestrian um, perhaps uh, is the significant percentage of the short trips you know so, and the pedestrian um, safety particularly and the pedestrian facility the pedestrian service quality that uh, we can offer to the users uh, again depends upon how we are uh, giving you know emphasizing or you are giving priority for the development of that uh, that one so to know that we should know uh, about the you know like your car traffic or say um, their characteristics you are observing microscopically you know similarly the pedestrian flow dynamics uh, you can do you can develop similar kind of uh, q is equal to something some kind of relationship you can develop there are different pedestrian facilities like on street you have off street then put over bridge under several several you know pedestrian facilities so you can have uh, simulated you know kind of study uh, also and uh, accordingly uh, the service level concept you can apply to the pedestrians because 
everybody this is about the service level concept okay so the service level concept it says that um, the satisfaction or say human being we want always the best quality of service okay um, but practically it is not possible to give the best quality of service to everybody particularly in India we have so many users if you want to give the best service then you have to give huge huge infrastructure and uh, you don't have that money and uh, you cannot get the return so that way somehow we should uh, compromise at some place so that is uh, the place of C you know so the a one is the best kind of service I mean you give 10 12 number of lanes we have less traffic you can travel at a speed of 100 150 even more than that then that that is called the best quality a type of service then b is like c we normally try to give c kind of service to the users and uh, we over time period we try to uh, see that whether the service level is going down to d or say e then we try to do or alter something so the question is that how to define this uh, service quality or the range of the service quality so it, it is a question mark basically so depending on the type of the facility okay suppose you have signalized junction or on signalized junction or suppose you have the urban street or suppose uh, you know like national highway so whether the level of service concept is same for all no it is not same for junctions your delay is the measuring parameter okay based on the delay you are classifying the service level for urban street or urban roads your speed average travel speed is the measure of effectiveness or the one through which you try to define your speed level okay the service level similarly so national highways the concept is different either you can use the concept of density or you can use the concept of vyc volume to capacity ratio okay so then there is a concept of capacity so what is capacity capacity all of you know that that is the maximum number of traffic that a particular kind of facility or infrastructure or road can take on a day say on a particular time time means day you can say so the two land roads say okay can take maximum 20000 pcu of vehicles then there is a concept of passenger car unit because we have different types of vehicles so we are trying to bring, bring them together to single unit so that single unit is called pcu passenger car unit so based on what this pcu depends the passenger car unit depends on your size of the vehicle and speed of the vehicle like your the bullock cart it travels very slow and its size is very big so that's why it has a high pcu factor okay so while you have conducted your classified traffic volume count or tvc you know the pcu factor of each type of vehicle and as i told you the pcu factor depends on the size and the speed of the vehicle so then the concept of the pcu that defined in the codal provision it is something okay but there is something called dynamic pcu factor okay dynamic pcu factor that depends upon the speed of the vehicle and the projected area projected area of the vehicle so accordingly you can define your pcu factor for individual vehicles multiply that you can find the that you can find the what is the traffic volume that is but capacity is different and flow and volume is different okay capacity is the one that is the maximum one okay again the capacity of the road depends upon the okay um, type of shoulder shoulder means on either side maybe soft shoulder or also hard shoulder suppose you have the city road okay then you are giving footpath and so something okay but so for the rural highways there is soft shoulder okay so the shoulders one that you are providing on emergency the vehicle can go or utilize that 
or sometimes we utilize that for parking purpose okay so likewise the capacity for four lane roads say roughly 40000 pcu six lane road 60000 pcu likewise so different road types have their own capacity limit so as the demand increase over time period because your growth is there okay then uh, accordingly you are more traffic okay the growth in fact i can tell you one or two line uh, while you are forecasting for the future the traffic okay there is something called growth factor you know what is written in our book if there is uh, nothing then you simply assume the growth factor is 7.5 percentage uh, but uh, if there is no data but if you have the data then you can determine the growth rate how to determine the growth rate using the trend model or historical data sets suppose you have the data for past 10 years traffic data okay then you can develop some kind of trend model using that trend model you just validate it that model you can uh, predict for the future but think is that the model that you are developed using this trend model is for the business as usual scenario i mean what is what was there in the past almost the similar thing will happen for the future so it has its own limitation now we can do something that is called econometric model okay so in the econometric model we give more emphasis about economical uh, economical development of that locality of that i mean particular city then locality then state maybe the country because the traffic is there are some local traffic or generated traffic and there are some through traffic okay while well, you consider all these then you have the this uh, total traffic so that that way you can uh, develop another kind of growth rate econometric model okay now which one is the realistic one so one can be pessimistic one can be optimistic so better we can take the average of these two and we can find what is the growth rate because this growth rate is very important if you just change the growth rate by say one percentage you will see that there is a huge difference in the projected traffic for the future no so uh, to find the growth rate uh, you may require the help of uh, economist or finance analyst you, you may not have uh, the all the information about the local area development all these you know so the finance analyst and economics they do a lot of thing about that uh, so that way so always uh, the user they want the best service but uh, we have to some way give some kind of service now coming to the public transport system public transport system um, everybody in fact want the best kind of public transport system particularly comfort uh, safety okay so the bus system is very popular in india and, uh, and you know in some city like the delhi then uh, like ahmedabad they have implemented this brta system bus rapid transit system so there they have given some emphasis to the bus users okay uh, but uh, delhi brta system was you know very popular it is somehow uh, because the car traffic in delhi is very large total number of cars in delhi perhaps equal to the number of car traffic in mumbai plus kolkata plus chennai you know then that number of car traffic is there in delhi so when you are taking good space you know like you can see here you are taking some space for the exclusive for bus travel some space you can uh, reserve for their st station points uh, so that way ultimately the space uh, got reduced for the car users so at the same place you will find five buses are there but 1000 
cars are you know in the queue so then the public agitation and so that way the system uh, is not very popular one so particularly if very big city big big city although in delhi you know that uh, the land use that you have for this public transport system is much more higher than your mumbai roughly 22 percentage of the area is reserved for transport system whereas mumbai it is only 11 percent but still uh, this kind of problem uh, occurred there but in uh, ahmedabad perhaps that was designed by uh, some design uh, institute in ahmedabad that is a very popular one and most successful one in india so far now coming to the lrts light rail transit system so this light rail transit system uh, you can see here the picture uh, it's a popular one if your city size is small or smaller size like say bhubaneswar like you have the you know like kochi or city having population 10 to 15000 or maximum say sorry 15 lakh or 20 lakh population size then or say like goa or something like that uh, so this uh, lrt system can work fine it has its capacity limit that is the thing okay so like your tram tramway and no? very old traditional way so it is that sort of lrt system only but if you, your uh, a requirement is more than you require metro system okay metro system is very expensive like that you know four kilometer cost in delhi uh, is uh, uh, roughly 100 crore per kilometer 100 crore is very big amount if you want to construct 50 kilometer means 5000 crore now it may be go beyond that okay so for a uh, you know developing country like uh, india now the thing is that who will give this much of money uh, for this construction or uh, Japan of course is helping us a lot and then uh, gradually we are developing this metro city uh, in different big big cities Delhi uh, metro you know that it has developed a lot uh, in fact it is developing in phase manner phase one completed then phase two then phase three likewise so the question is who is giving the money um, one significant percentage of the money is uh, coming from the central government okay then you have say japan government they have jica or something like that then you have contribution of the state government so that way external funding is there lot of external funding and uh, Jaffman the one good part is that they are interested is very low you know like the bullet train the they're planning the interest rate is very very minimal another thing is that about technical knowledge you know there was time uh, when India was struggling uh, first of all to how to build and operate a metro system like E. Sridharan, you know, the metro man. Uh, he, he worked several years in the Konkan Railway. Then uh, he is, you know, like the person who take the initiative to uh, develop the metro system. And over time period, this uh, Delhi Metro become the consultant for all other metros, like Mumbai Metro, you know, Kochi Metro, all Metro. So uh, Delhi Metro is the consultant. So thing is that. Uh, technical manpower the expertise uh, personnel uh, at a time you know there is a huge shortage because the all the uh, people who work for many years having good experience they shifted to gulf country they get three to five times more salary but anyway over time period this um, delhi metro the uh, that become a corporation and uh, now i think we have so many expertise people are there so across india several metro projects are going on coming to the surface rail system uh, this is something about you know local train uh, like say in mumbai mumbai local train is uh, the perhaps the most successful world uh, one in the world of course uh, the you know 
service quality of course was not that good but now they are perhaps it's changing it uh, and it is difficult to provide this much every day some you know 65 i think it may go beyond 65 lakh people are traveling uh, in the city using this local train 65 lakh you know that is like the population of hyderabad city there was a time it, it may be now maybe hyderabad city population may be more but sometime it was the situation was like that so how to accommodate such huge number of uh, you know people to travel so only through this surface rail system that is the lifeline of say mumbai uh, then you have something you know let's say taxi system or so that is also called uh, ipt intermediate public transport system so the you have the pub, private vehicle private car nowadays you have the ola cab etc you know and uh, also commercially available taxis are there so this uh, of course in india you know that the most successful model you can say is about three wheeler three wheeler eh? auto because in terms of cost in terms of flexibility etc still auto is very successful but up recently your other cabs um, they are coming now coming to the difficulties in indian cities okay uh, you can see here in the picture how it is like i think picture from mumbai city only maybe in the thane area or something like that you have huge population then how to transport who will, who will take this challenge and how to solve it and one point you want flexibility okay uh, in another point you want less money and uh, in another you want less time and how it can be done okay. so the traffic congestion uh, can be reduced if you promote your public transport system the pub public transport system if you can give better service quality means frequency if you can provide better say comfort sitting arrangements then people will come from private mode to public mode and what other things uh, reliability that is important you know uh, that way only you can convert major chunk of the private mode of transport to public mode of the transportation this uh, utilization of technology you know uh, like you have sir sorry to interrupt sir. pardon uh, it's okay yep. uh, it's already approaching 12 sir okay so we can accelerate little bit okay. yeah yeah sure no problem so uh, the traffic management okay you can do through several techniques um one of the new uh, the concept that is coming about intelligent transport system so basically in simple form it is about the information system okay how to you know like in the different uh, points you can give uh, information to the users now the nowadays everybody is having smartphone system so you can get the information about the uh, commercial or say public transport facility then how how much time it will take to reach at your place uh, likewise so that way uh, we can if you can give reliable information to the user then uh, you, more and more users can depend upon your public transport system and that will be more successful it is a very huge area in fact the intelligent transport system uh, okay so i, I think it, it is basically you know it work in a very coordinated manner basically and uh, you you need a very uh, up to date uh, network road network and uh, you you have your information that you capture uh, maybe through your uh, say gps um, that gps is there in your say own uh, mobile 
and uh, you have the GPS system that is enabled in your say public transport system like your bus system or like that your Ola cab or something like that so that way you can coordinate uh, with one system to another system and you can uh, utilize the resource accident I think we have discussed something now a little bit discussion about the types of pavement okay so the pavement uh, are of primarily two types one is about flexible payment and another is about rigid payment the payment uh, you know there are different layer structures I mean layers uh, because the load that is coming on the top is distributed from top to the bottom so to best utilize the material we try to provide different layers the layer having uh, best property uh, or best load carrying property we are putting on the top of course those are the costly material so the load intensity or the stress level that as you go down will decrease so you can use little bit inferior kind of material and uh, normally uh, only the surface layers uh, they uh, contains your bituminous material like if you go down like you have the base course you have the sub base course where you have only aggregate different grades of aggregates okay graded and put and uh, no cement is material sometime even it is it work as drainage layer you know your sub base layer work as the drainage layers that is called sub surface drainage layer then of course you have the natural formation or the natural soil subgrade so the the subgrade having high cvr value can that is your foundation layer that can sustain more traffic that is coming from the top if your subgrade layer is weak like you have the black cotton soil or say clay soil or something like that then in that case it, it, of course you you have very important road like national highway expressway or something like that then you can replace uh, with some locally available shandy materials that that will be really good to carry the traffic the other type of road you have is about rigid pavement the rigid pavement having the again different layer structures but here the like you have the subways and waste course they are club into one layer and your subgrade is there and the rigid structure the only difference here you find is about the distribution system here in the flexible pavement, you have the grain to grain distribution that load. Okay, but whereas it is uh, in the um, rigid pavement, and the pavement it is worked like a slab. Okay, so that way your um, design approach is different. The maintenance, of course, is one uh, you know big issue now because in past 20 years we have constructed several important uh, road projects like you have the golden quadrilateral project then uh, even your PMG say roads and several other roads we have constructed uh, but to my knowledge we have not given much emphasis on the road maintenance you know there are different types of maintenance emergency like you have some natural hazards are there then you have the reactive maintenance then you have some preventive maintenance I mean before going much much failure we just provide some kind of regular maintenance every year you provide so that is perhaps uh, is the best policy you know provide some maintenance so that structurally the system should be safe you know two two things we consider one is the structural uh, point another is the functional one functional ones we want the best kind of riding quality okay so that way there are different ways we can um, different way you can measure what is the functional quality how best or comfortably we can travel on the surface of the road and how the road is strong from the inside like Benkelman beam technique you are using to know about the flexibility or the rigidity about the structure and there are different uh, types of failures you can find the cause of the failures you know like you have the fatigue failure like you have the temperature failure and uh, you have the rot uh, like likewise accordingly there are some treatment okay 
uh, this is something about data collection technique you know this traffic engineering one big challenge is about traffic data collection nowadays you have so many new new techniques are coming like magnetic loop passive loop i mean microwave radar ultrasonic passive and then video image of course this is something about images you know so that those techniques uh, i mean here there are a lot of things uh, we can say uh, those instrumentations we can utilize for our benefit how we can collect more and more data then we can uh, you know uh, analysis those data and uh, utilize maybe for our modeling purpose or maybe for whatever information system like that here are i am listing some kind of uh, you know application software in the transportation field so there are so many simulation software like bsim uh, bsum you are know, limdep nlogic stata transcad is one by caliper corporation planning software mm. then you have cube cube is also about planning and simulation is there dynasim amson is there mx road for the road alignment design and you know, by this is uh, i think bentley bentley is the one so likewise if you can go through there are several uh, softwares planning and uh, simulation softwares of course some of the simulation softwares you should not purchase randomly because uh, the simulation uh, softwares those are developed are particularly for uh, western country scenario they are driving is on the right side our driving in the left side there will be a lot of mismatch and that so we have to be careful while selecting a particular kind of software and like that but we need some kind of statistical software also okay so the future transportation system is says about automation we need more and more automation in the system then alternative fuel uh, okay uh, because polluting one okay that that gradually anyway it will go out and uh, so that way you will have large amount of data sets so that way you should able to play with your data and big data now uh, i i i think the technical discussion part is more or less over so for next few minutes only very quickly i'll tell something about what are the scopes in this particularly transportation engineering uh say while uh, you know after you graduating from your say bta college or masters or if you are having your phd or something like that what you can do after your degree qualification so there are three major sector you can classify one is about consultancy one is about construction another is finance and analytics so the consultancy you have different types of you know design engineers like highway engineers your traffic engineer transport planners okay uh so i think master degree is one preferred one for this consultancy job and there are several organization you will find in delhi so delhi is the best place for your consultancy and many many uh, maybe 50 or more than that so many you know multinational company you will find so coming to the second one that is about construction construction i mean the, the road engineers basically you have to physically uh, be there and so of course um here you know construction major construction company you will find in mumbai or say in delhi and of course it is distributed some other place also after a graduate or just a btech uh, you can start your uh, profession in the construction industry so the, the the third one is about finance and analytics so like you have the pwc and y ilf as some infrastructure leasing and finance service like <coughs> so so these organization help the government uh, in you know uh, first identifying uh, some major projects uh, with the help of these you know management and the bureaucrats and so that way um, then uh, execution you know? so that means it is the coordination of these three people finance uh, experts then you have consultancy they will design and the construction engineer they will construct and the maintenance engineers but here one thing i can say that in for the third type of job you perhaps need one additional degree uh, maybe management up to your civil engineering degree 
है ना ओवर टाइम पीरियड यू कैन गो फॉर दैट देन देर लॉट ऑफ स्कोप इन दिस यू नो सेक्टर then how to excel in industry basically you can say consultancy in the construction company or in this all the field so if you want to excel then you should have very strong knowledge in the software i mean how to operate different types of softwares then you should have some kind of computational skill or the coding skill statistical analysis skill then the number of projects that you are handling then exposure in abroad that also does matter in a different working environment your leadership quality is also there and of course in the consultancy side uh, because it is office job so some sort of good communication is also required whereas in the construction field uh, it is more you know uh, delivery or output oriented you know uh, I, i can tell you one thing whether it is consultancy or construction or whatever it may be there is no much research i am telling you if you want to do some research better don't go to that area you know it is not like that it is absolutely time oriented and uh, you have to deliver that's all okay so here in this case uh, only thing is that you should uh, able to read the design what the consultant has given and executive execute on time you know you have to work uh, day and night then you have your team own team and if you stay for longer in a particular organization then you will get the benefit initially for maybe to get some better opportunity you can just sit here and there but after some time you can stick to a particular organization for many years you will get the benefit and i i can tell you that these two field whether it is a consultancy or a construction it is a really both are very interesting field and sometime i have seen that people there have been experience of the both some people they work in consultancy for many years and shift to construction for few years and like that even many people who are in the construction they shift to consultancy for a few years okay. so that is the perhaps the best one um, but sometimes it is very difficult to shift from one field to another okay uh of course in the management field the third one uh, you should have very uh, good uh, you know writing skill i mean very quickly you should able to write uh, uh, big big reports and uh, ideas also germinate uh, should be that you you should able to convince to the bureaucrats ultimately bureaucrats are the one they take the decision you go and convince 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 and to you know they are only the new project will develop you know now about i think all of you know about state psu upsc then gate score new you know recruitment agency so in civil engineering field everybody is having some attraction towards government job and uh, of course uh, yeah and the research organization uh, in india you have several all iits are having some kind of research they are carrying out existing established new iit is now they are just coming but still they have they don't have specialization so that is the one thing and some of the old iits uh, they they already have established and you have the crri central road research institute then the you have the institute of urban transport iut then uh, cirt central institute of road transport in pune uh, then there is a training institute you know that is of uh, nh so indian academy of high engineers okay uh, so frequently they give different different set of training and uh, about say abroad i will tell something um then how to you know uh, reach all these things so suppose you are doing your btech then you have say you have the gate score then you can go for your mtech even in some institute they have ms program also or directly you can go for this mtech com phd program some institute they admit okay or after you in mtech you can go for your phd program nowadays you have this prime ministers you know research funding so that way you can also do your phd so after btech you can uh, apply for your gre say toefl uh, then you need some recommendation strong recommendation of course and uh, uh then uh, some research publication that really help to you, you know, to get in uh, ms or phd then how to get the information about 
say particular area particular professor that you want or say any university that you want to go there you can do google search then you can go for say qs rating okay you can just say qs rating global university ranking or there are some other like times higher rating then us news several okay uh, rating like in india nirf we have so likewise so you can go to that university then you can go through uh, department uh, then specialization then professor and their profile like that you can go on searching then what's about the transportation study in in say, other countries like us us you know there are so many uh, big big uh, universities so perhaps this should be the number one choice for everybody then you have the canada australia uk where of course english education is uh, i mean we are good in english in india so we will not face much trouble whereas in europe there is strong science education in europe they have more emphasis on science research Completely, if you go on checking, um, then you will find that there is a lot of uh, you know uh, mix science with your engineering research. Singapore, you have or oh, two three big universities are there, of course, but job opportunity there is more challenging. You can get good degree, uh, but if you want to be settled somewhere, I think you can say Canada is a very good place. I mean, there is completely uh, less competition. Similarly, Korean, Japan, you have some language problem, but technologically, like, you know, if you want to do some ITS kind of thing, intelligent transport system, then Japan, of course, is one good place. Now, the thing is that uh, how to get scholarship, or is this really uh, people get scholarship or, or not? Actually, the particularly for your MS degree, uh, getting scholarship is really very, very difficult. Very, very difficult, I can say less than 10 percent student oh. only get uh, the scholarship okay so that again depends upon your gre score then your rank in your institute or university then your in university ranking and the recommendation that you are getting how popular or strong uh, the person or the professor is then of course you have some kind of research publication the nature of the publication that you have uh, then what is, uh, you know, life after, say, M.Tech degree in India or M.S. in abroad? What do you can do after your M.Tech? So either you, there is a lot of scope in the consultancy industry and uh, teaching line also. Uh, so that is, I mean, number of institutes are coming, you know. Then uh, you can join in some uh, research organizations. Then, uh, you, of course, construction is always there. Then. When you have more knowledge, then you can become entrepreneur. You know, you can. Of course, there is one more big uh, opportunity that is PhD after MTech. You know? So that way. So what's about uh, after PhD? Suppose you did your MTech, then you did your PhD. So there is one option that is about postdoctoral research. So your highest degree is PhD. You know, there is no degree after PhD. So that is postdoctoral research experience only. Many people get confused, so they think that there is one more degree. No, that is no degree. You have industry experience there. I mean, opportunities there. You can go to professor teaching like life will much you know, uh, much much easy to get after your PhD. Then you can become scientist also. Okay. Then similarly the consultancy industry. Then there is a question mark whether somebody will select me after my PhD in the consultancy industry is absolutely you will get there is no problem myself i worked more than two years in the consultancy after my phd degree so there is absolutely no problem you will get a better position better salary uh, and better respect so your uh, you know higher study really give you return with time period no problem uh, then how can you become a faculty if you want to become uh, like faculty in some of the you know best university or if you want to be faculty in some uh, in outside or how you can be w one thing I can uh, suggest is that your career you know decision is very important from the early stage I mean if you take the same decision late so age really matter you know if you get the same thing in the late perhaps the scope is much lesser and uh, PhD is essential if you want to be in this field and uh, P 
PhD degree should be from better institute. Okay, and uh, your throughout career that you have already that high CG does matter. Okay, and uh, to get some good position in India, if you are having some foreign qualification like PhD in, then it really helps. It really helps. Even postdoc, particularly in science field, people having more number of postdoc experience. But in engineering field also, if you have good postdoc experience, because it's a different working environment. Basically, you know, you have the skill how to manage the personnel, your students, and that way, most effective manner. So that you learn there. And uh, publication. Publication is only, you know, major factor that you can. So whatever it is there in the left side, but your publication will count for your selection in one of the major university and the number of publication its impact factor many 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 things okay uh, then how to excel in the teaching or r and d sector once you are there suppose then how you will excel so then you should have a research project you should have consultancy project because resource generation is part and parcel in this uh, higher study or higher learning process if you are not able to generate then perhaps your career will be getting slow then quality teaching that of course you know uh, you you will have uh, good teaching in the classroom then uh, research guidance so uh, uh, only thing that does matter is how many phd students you are guiding uh, of course your master student uh, that that is also required but uh, that uh, never come to uh, in in count how many phd student you are guiding then a journal and say conference publication so that 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 will help you then how many number of short term courses or continuing education you are conducting because you are sharing your knowledge the society is getting benefited and uh, many other people from across the country or say likewise they are also involved then how, what kind of administrative responsibility that you have taken from your organization and say other social responsibility uh, beyond uh, your professional life how you are benefiting to the society so that way uh, i know teaching profession uh, is not that easy that it seems to be it is i think uh, you have maximum number of job to do uh, if you can say compared to any other profession then uh, what is the best profession for you I mean, how to take the decision whether to go uh, which area, basically, you know, you, you are a person. So you know your strength, you know your weakness, okay? And, uh, and that means you're physically or emotionally or say something like that. So that way you assess yourself first where you will fit to the best. Then uh, one more thing I can say about your job, nature of the job, your how, where you will enjoy each and every day of your professional life that will really count throughout your life okay so money that can be attraction at the beginning i mean well while you are young but after some time you'll find that your many other things your family your children i mean many other things also come into picture so that way uh, that priority changes over time period so the career decision that you are taking uh, of course, is very important if you are taking it in your very early 20s or before that, even while just you are entering to the college in the second year or third year, you just take the decision. So the right decision in the right time will give you the optimum benefit. Okay, for civil engineers in general. So is there any good scope? Yes, there is huge investment in India because so far India has not invested huge amount of money. Actually, it is there. And uh, some billion trillion kind of money will come in the future. But only thing you remember, so quality does matter. So there are so many students that are coming, but only few are you know, employable or getting good opportunity. So that means the kind of skill that you have to develop apart to your classroom uh, education. So that is one thing, high CG is required. But what uh, we have discussed about computational skills, software, knowledge, these, that, so many, so many things, okay? Your communication, English, your personality. So in every, that should be the passion, how I, I will excel 
okay so that way you prepare make prepared from the beginning uh, then one more question normally come can i get any opportunity in outside india because that is one attraction for everybody so with my indian degree yes there is some chance particularly say in the gulf or say middle countries and uh, uh, if you have some good knowledge then you can go outside uh, but if you want to work in some very so like us or so then you have to pass through an, another kind of test they have like for medic medicine profession they also conduct one test for engineers they have some test they conduct so you have to pass then you can practice and um, so that means over you know time period your specialization becoming very important so simply your btech degree yeah it is there you, you can but uh, if you have uh, you know masters degree at least masters for forget about phd if you have at least master degree in your hand um, after 5 to 10 years working in a particular industry you know you will get better opportunity and particular space because these these multinational company now they are requiring more more specialized people there are what are the recent uh, developments or how because everybody now they want to do something apart to your you know btech degree so either you can do some additional management degree or you can do some economic and finance analysis because at some point i told you that there are so many things economic and finance analysis to do apart to your technical things so in the taking the decision process okay so you will find very less number expertise people having both knowledge either you will find some economist or you will find some technical person but the same person having both knowledge will will really take better decision okay then this is uh, in the recent past the legal expertise in the big big organization they they hire some legal legal people uh, okay so if you are having the same i mean you have technical background as well as legal background so you will have both i mean you are uh, you will get uh, better weightage in your organization okay so this technical plus artificial intelligence and machine learning so uh, this is uh, perhaps is the future uh, so that way the things is uh, going on big data analysis okay so a lot of uh, you know it and uh, its knowledge this is one thing is about gis application you know so it is just application software you know no 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 development but particularly in the transportation field or say in the water resource field there are a lot of application of this gis you can do a lot of thing if you have some good knowledge about gis okay so uh, apart to this uh, if you want to uh, develop your own organization then you know lot nowadays you have the startup uh, then at many big big university or institutes you have incubation center okay so you can start it from there after a few years you can go out and make it large uh, you can have your own design organization or firm and uh, of course if you have some five five ten years of experience then better you can take better decision because you have the, your own experience similarly in the construction field uh, if you have some experience then you can start your own organization perhaps we have discussed a lot yeah it is 12 30 now so that way uh, we are stopping here so if you have some question please ask sir thank you so much for giving an elaborate idea of transport resource practice in india and abroad uh, participants have some questions i'll be asking one by one sir okay sir when rithik portal has asked how uh, to reduce traffic jams yeah traffic jam or congestion at one point actually we have shown that one is encourage the public transportation as much as possible you know this is the best one i can think encourage or you give more i mean um, more incentive incentive means you know the public transport system are not beneficial i am telling you so that means government can be a certain percentage uh, for the users so that uh, the users they they will have to pay completely less 
uh, and uh, other thing is that discourage the private transport i mean you can put some penalty uh, like i told you something is about con uh, congestion pricing at the so big say like mumbai say at a particular area you can uh, put heavy parking charge or you can put uh, you know um, some other form of uh, like that is of course is like penalty so that way this is one major but apart to that you you can apply your <coughs> ITS intelligent transportation or IT skill uh, better information coordinated manner so that uh, the users can uh, use that so I, I think these are very I mean uh, uh, thing but apart to that uh, there are different uh, countries like you know Singapore they have other system also like odd even numbers then carpooling so different different methods they are applying but this traffic management or congestion management I am telling you these are temporary uh, solution only so whatever you are doing but the long-term solution is always do some good planning good some good planning then your traffic problem will be solved yeah sir Mohammed Arif has asked uh, uh -huh. what should be realistic solution for transportation system real realistic solution is coordinated development uh, I mean you have several organizations like I am telling you say like uh, say in Mumbai there is BMC Bombay Municipality Corporation then you have the MMRDA Mumbai then you have Thane Municipality Corporation then something something so many agencies are there so they are developing their own way some infrastructure okay I mean if you want to coordinate uh, the agency in terms of their implementation in terms of their pricing system like somebody some of uh, I think uh, I think recently one of my students was telling about sir if you can make single pricing system so that portion can use that for all mode of transportation so that you will not spend much time in you know waiting or I mean like that so this is the i mean that way it can help to the users or attract the users to go for the public transport system and uh, this is something about technological application uh, but uh, apart to this um, you know the speed and the efficiency of the system that also does matter so how you can increase the speed and the frequency and the efficiency uh, oh, basically you know that uh, energy is required energy is in different form energy may be in the petrol diesel or energy may be your power form okay so likewise you know the in say hyperloop the bullet train system so so the country like India where it is so big so simply you have to go for mass transit system okay mass transit system having high capacity and uh, which can travel at very fast so that way it will sustain in the long term like like one simple thing I'm telling you uh, the expressway like in in China they have more than one lakh kilometer of expressway in India we have around 2000 kilometer of expressway okay so such kind of high you know good quality infrastructures we required so okay uh, yeah yeah so that way huge investment uh, I mean people are there to pay so in India whatever public transportation or infrastructure you develop within a month or within few months that system will fill you are you should be very I mean clear about that so users you will get okay even users are now ready to pay so now the authority have to take initiative to implement or before that you should have good technical knowledge I like the bullet train that skill is there in Japan we don't have right now you know so definitely we should adopt such kind of techno technology which will give you in return in the long term no? Okay, fine. So next, uh, Srijita Parmaning has asked, huh. Sir, uh, what are the basic factors or steps for huh. planning 
parking areas in urban okay. cities generally uh okay so in urban uh you have you know haphazard parking system so like uh, you have two thing one is on street parking you have the off street parking if you have city like say you know bhubaneswar or ralkala these are you know like small city population 5 to 10 lakh like that it is fine you have some space you can uh, uh, develop i mean give a uh, marking for on street road parking uh, even uh, you can fix parking meter also you know over time period that will come parking meters and uh, some open space uh, and uh, designate uh, you can make it as a parking space and uh, of course there you may have to pay uh, some amount because you know uh, to maintain a system you you require money so that way and uh, without money perhaps no system will survive uh, in long term so then if the city grow further it become big okay like the few of the parking space that you have used for say uh, off street parking that you can convert into multi storied parking system a okay, multi storied parking system and uh, which can accommodate more and more traffic and uh, focusing to say uh, in the cbd or commercial area okay then you know uh, now now in say in many developed nations uh, they have such technology where you just go and park at the basement the car will automatically go to the different level they will place it and likewise so i mean it is a phase manner phase development not in a single phase uh, we have to get solution to all the cities no not not like that so that parking uh, problem uh, but the problem here you know in india in many case uh, we don't uh, penalize uh, we don't uh, enforce the rule regulations we are very sympathetic towards our users so that way it become so you know haphazard Uh, you will find vehicles are putting here and there on the street, so the capacity is reduced. We are not getting half capacity, uh, so that way that, so we have to uh, do that. And uh, apart to that, uh, one one thing I can suggest is that while uh, you are making some designated parking space at different different location, then you you should be get ready to go for walk. few distance maybe it's a meter or say half kilometer or kilometer so like that so that that also does matter so that psychology i mean once you develop that sort of thing then perhaps people will gradually accept that uh, these are some simple solution but some other solution also perhaps can be implemented uh, sir to sir kant panda has asked sir what is the reason behind selection of a road huh? uh, which way should vehicle movement means uh, like in india huh? if vehicle moves in left direction then in some countries vehicle moves in right direction so is there any some rule or how it is selected for different countries uh, yeah basically you know uh, our uh, we, we are ruled by britishers so um, Uh, more or less the concept of left uh, you know going our vehicle steering is on the right side uh, it it is started from there okay so um, uh, in some countries you will find uh, the left uh, side movement in some western country like us or so you will find the right side movement <coughs> um from the literature perhaps i have not come across where it is uh, written that right uh, movement is uh, better or left uh, movement is better not ex in exact form it is no written perhaps and uh, it, it is basically the adoption so from the beginning you have adopted something now you are not able to change you cannot change basically if you have to change then uh, you know your all the vehicles have to be thrown out so which is not practically possible so that way it is simply adoption i think sir when katakam haris has asked sir what are the future changes in teaching 
how we can enhance can we survive in this profession now i am working as assistant professor from 2017 yeah sure sure this is the perhaps uh, this is one good question because many people who are working now they are gradually feeling more and more uh, and stress um, i mean when you are in the electronic uh, you know uh, format so it seems to be you are more accountable okay so the traditional classroom teaching um, where we have you know more freedom um, of course here also a lot of flexibility is there but uh, it is all always recorded that is fine but uh, one thing is that here also a lot of flexibility is there you can fix your time you can discuss with your student and you can record your video and the resource is uh, increasing enormously you just go on uh, type google google will give you a lot of ppt google will give you a lot of material uh, that that is there which for us was not there uh, before so uh, getting a lot of good materials uh, is completely easy and one thing is that now people are not preparing to read book okay so that that uh, choice perhaps has missed somewhere so neither i mean teacher are very interested to go for book reading or the student and sometimes you you can say that they don't have time also everything is available there so the need of the teacher i mean so you can say if you just google type you will find nptel material if you just google type you will get some other material this and that thousand of resources open course where likewise even online some course met, i mean core class you can take but the teacher is always there i mean teacher role is just not to pass the information okay so i think that you know that perhaps for which you are in this profession so our job uh, is to teach the student uh, not just to give the information and uh, motivate the student because they are the future and uh, of course uh, this is the profession i am mean, teaching or research r and d sector uh, to my knowledge and the best students should come to this field i mean uh, they they should have more uh, thinking power they should have more motivation uh, to do something Uh, not just uh, to get some money uh, i mean to make good people a good student and which are of course the uh, people who will uh, build the nation uh, good engineers so that teacher sequence of teaching that emotion interaction with the student that will remain forever that nobody can no technology can take it out i, I think teacher has a bigger role bigger role than i mean previous what it was so we will do that okay next question that's all sir okay so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, present and interact with, with the people from i, I perhaps across india and many uh, professors also sitting there it's a really good experience and um, uh, i think my uh, personal details are there in our website my email id is there my phone number is there at any point if you want to interact something or if you want to any sort of like uh, you know research material or some uh, whatever so that way i am available and uh, i will be really appreciate if you can discuss with me in future also thank you thank you so much sir for sharing your vast experience with all of us we are extremely honored to have you sir and for your thank you sir thank you okay so take care bye bye Okay. All the participants to join uh, at two uh, forty-five p.m. for the next session. Thank you all. Okay, Sitansu. Thank you. So I am stopping here. Thank you, sir.